the Bible is supernatural miraculous. It's the living word of the triune God and that Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, the God-man, equal to the Father and the Spirit in essence, one true God, three equally distinct persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. So the, the true God is a him and a them, a me and an us. So fear those, Father, Son, and Spirit, who eternally exists as the one God. Fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. May the Lord Jesus save me from error and stammering and confusion. Save us from sinning against him, but loving him and worshiping him perfectly until you return. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and protect us. Give us power to silence these dogs. They will never make us stop. As long as the Holy Spirit fills us, and we're covered by your blood, Lord Jesus. They cannot make us stop. And we will not stop even unto death. We love you, Son of God. The right, so this man here, yeah. You know, t to some degree, I do respect his scholarship. But I think when it comes to this Trinity, his explanation to me is confusing because ultimately you could say the three in one makes sense if you attribute it to a human condition. Uh, so he would actually reject my version of what Trinity means he's got his explanation and he because he thinks he's actually God himself and his ego is so crazy you know he talks about spirit yeah the spirit is someone's vibe is someone's energy you walk in a room and you feel they've got a bad spirit or good spirit but as much as this man's a scholar of the book he's got a bad spirit you know he's quick to be critical and judge people in a dark negative way he's like an attack dog and he's not of the uh, he's not got a gentle heavenly spirit he's more like hell like yeah a troubled soul but that aside anyway he's quite knowledgeable but all I can say is if you're gonna say the father the son and the holy spirit are three distinct beings persons and but are one God <clears throat> you have to explain it better than what you are because my analogy is this the mind which we all have which can dream which can think which can create three dimensional images within ourselves, is basically like the father yeah the intelligence and then your spirit is your your soul your energy your vibe yeah your heart the love, the hate, yeah, that's your spirit. And to me, your son is your physical body. Because not only does your physical body expose itself to hurt, pain, and sacrifice, it should be faithful to you, the father, the mind, and to the soul. So the three work together, your mind your soul and body works together yeah your words leave your mouth and faithfully obey you so when I speak to somebody my words physically leave me and they hit your ear and you've received them they may even disappear the sound but what I do is I leave an impression on you from me yeah when you hear my voice you know it's sent from me when you see my image even though my body is not really me you can't see my mind but my mind is revealed to the world through my body yeah through my fruits what I bear with this body my son and so the metaphor is this that is the way I see the creator working as above so below and the creator made this world to be a heaven for us but we're so ungrateful that we didn't realise it and we act hell like our behaviour and our conduct is hell like so the creator himself came down was born on the earth as a man to be a perfect example to mankind to be humble and have empathy so much that you would sacrifice yourself which is the highest form of empathy is self sacrifice so the true message is this what the way the creator has made us 
is how the creator set up himself. He has a mind, a soul, and a body, which is his Christ. Through it says, through the Christ, all things were created. He's my right hand. Everything was made through him, by and for him. So ultimately, the body needs things, material things. Love it needs the world. It needs all this stuff, comfort. The spirit needs to be nourished as well with love and experiences. Yeah, and the mind needs to be stimulated, and all those three work together. Now, if you lose the mind, what you're going to be left with is a body and a spirit. Yeah, but what you're going to end up with is a, is a very lustful, uncorrected being. Yeah, like a child with no adult mind to guide it. Now, if you lose the body, what you're going to be left with is sheer frustration. The mind and the soul will be longing to experience things. It'll just be in a dream world. Now, if you lose the soul, what you're left with is just a body and a mind. You're left with a robot, like Dr. Spock. So, all these three have to work together in a tri-unity. And that's the same way the creator is. Wherever the creator exists, it might be spread out amongst heavens and the earth. But the creator still set up the way we are. And Sam Shimon has got his own way of saying things. But I don't believe it. it really explains the deep order of things. He's just talking on the surface. Saying what he sees. And not really understanding the true metaphor or analogy. So I'm sure he probably will attack me as he does. But because he's not really a deep spiritual man he's not a true man of spirit he will not discern what I'm saying and he'll just dismiss it because he's got an ego and he has to be right he has to be the man that knows it all and that kind of um, boastful nature is very ugly it's not it's not heavenly so that's what I've got to say on the trinity some people might disagree with me or agree with me or not even understand me but this is how I interpret the text.